Matthew 24, 32 through 35. Now learn a lesson from the fig trees. Now, it's, fig trees were very common in that area. I don't think they're common in the area where we live today, but they're very common in the Middle East and still are today. The figs were used to make many things. It was considered a fruit. It's debated that Adam and Eve may have covered it. And the fruit that they, the forbidden fruit may have been fig, considering they covered themselves with fig leaves. So it's a very, it's pretty important tree in the Middle East. There is a time when her branch is tender and her leaves begin to sprout. Now many people say this refers to Israel. It could refer clearly to anything. Well, we'll just say it refers to Israel. And it, and it sprouting is kind of a rebirth type thing. And this is what the people want to hear. They want to hear Israel is going to be reborn. The thing is, it wasn't in any of their lifetime. You know that this happens when summer is almost here. Summer almost here means that the end is near, top thing. Many people use this as a prediction to say that, well, Israel was born, reborn in the 40s, and uh, this generation is going to see the end because of that. Which yeah, it, it. yeah this uh, generation, it could mean anything. It may be done again to where the fig tree gets uprooted. It may refer to, if it does to Israel, their territory needs to be what it was supposed to be. And they haven't been fully restored yet, so it could be debatable there too. In the same way, you will see all these things beginning to happen, and you will know that my coming is near. Now, as Christians, we're going to understand the signs. We're going to see the signs. We're going to know his time's here and near, but we're not going to know his time's here. You know, we may predict, well, it's going to happen soon. We can determine that. But we ain't going to determine. It's going to happen today. It's going to happen this year. But based on the signs as Christians, we can determine if it's closer. Mm -hmm. The world ain't going to be able to see the signs. Going to the world to find out when the end of the world's going to happen is just, they're wrong. If they knew anything, they would have known Christ. Yeah. Then at last, this age will come to its end. Right. Come at that time, it will, I will be at the right at the door. Amish verse 33, I'll back it up. In the same way, you will see all these things beginning to happen, and you will know that my coming is near. At that time, I will be right at the door. You know, I, I don't think Jesus returning is ever going to be a surprise to the true Christians. It's going to be a surprise to the world. But when it happens, the Christians are going to be like, I was ready for this. I knew this was going to happen soon. I was praying for it. Yes. Christians are going to be ready. The world's never ready because they don't got Christ and they're just facing judgment. But we'll be ready. You know, we see how Paul and all these people, it's debatable whether they thought Jesus was going to come back in their lifetime. But it, thing is they were ready for him to come back if he chose to come back during their lifetime. We don't need to worry about when he comes back because we're ready to receive him. Then at the last, at last this age will come to its end. Now this is perhaps referring to the age of sin, referring to this age of the earth. This kind of ceases what we know and his reign sets up. Now it's debatable whether his reign symbolic or literal. But the fact is he's going to come back and things are going to be different. Things are going to be remade in, completely in his image, not, no longer in sin. 
Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words stand forever. You know, Tommy said it before. And he's got the greatest job on earth. Because the two things that last forever is the souls of man and the word of God. And his job is to deal with both. I've always liked him saying that. But it's true. And this earth will pass away. But the words of God will remain. Now, I don't know if that means the scriptures we hold on to will remain. But we'll see the word. We'll see Jesus. So... Do we really need the Bible at the point where we can just ask Jesus? Probably not. He is the Word. We'll have all knowledge. I don't know if we'll have all knowledge, but we'll have Him to go to. We won't need to seek Scripture. We can just seek Him. Right. 